Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be joined by Daniel Geffen. Daniel is the founder of the Geffen Media Group and the inventor of Podbooker. Geffen Media is one of the first podcast booking agencies and helped influential authors sell hundreds of thousands of books by getting them on top-rated podcasts. And Podbooker is a platform for guests and hosts to easily connect. Daniel, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Seth, for having me on the show. All right, so let's go back in time a little bit because you weren't always the superstar that you are right now. You started off uh, getting detention for wanting attention, and now you're getting attention for others. How did you decide to go from, how did you go from being completely invisible to getting over 250,000 downloads on your podcast? Let's talk a little bit about the story. All right. All right. Well, the story could be as long as you want or as short as you want, but well, I guess I'll give you sort of like the overview and we can dive deeper into anything you want. Um, but the backstory is, yes, I jumped up on classroom tables. I was the class clown craving attention. Uh, unfortunately, it sort of backfired because I realized very quickly that people were not laughing with me. They were laughing at me and I became the sad clown inside. But outside, I remained sort of the happy clown, but nobody knew what was going on inside. And then fast forward many years uh, of a lot of sort of you know, working on myself and, and reading a lot of self-help books and consuming a lot of self-help, you know, I ended up getting married and, uh, and marrying the girl of my dreams. And we ended up, I started a business because I couldn't work for anybody else because quite frankly, uh, it just didn't work out. Kind of like school where I felt like I was in a prison. So it, working for other people, I felt like I was in a prison. And so I just kept getting fired, including having working for my dad. And then my dad didn't have the balls to find me. So my mother did it. Um, oh my so so it, yeah, pretty embarrassing. At one point, I got kicked out of uh, our first home after we had our first child. I was Pretty much, you could say we were homeless. Uh, we didn't have anywhere to live. I couldn't afford to pay for groceries. And we ended up living with my in laws, which was, yeah, not great for uh, the manlyhood, you know? I'm and sure. uh, yeah, that was not a fun period of my life. But then my wife, being the rock that she is, um, really, she was behind me 100% and said that, you know, she believes I could start my own business and do my own thing. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I, decided, okay, let's try it. Lots of ups and downs and ended up building a, a successful company that still runs itself today, but I don't have an involvement in it. I managed to outsource everything just because I'm lazy or just want to have more time to do the things I enjoy. And about four years ago, this is kind of the story about how I got into podcasting. So I was playing tennis. I'm a very competitive tennis player. So if anyone's listening to this and you want a good game of tennis, come to Israel. I'll take you on. Um, and I get a phone call, the phone call that changed my life, as cheesy as that sounds. This guy says to me, Daniel, I heard you have an interesting business story. I'd love to have you on my podcast. And I'll never forget my response. My response to him was, what the heck is a podcast? <laughs> I thought it was like some alien spaceship or something, podcast. Um, so he explained to me what it was. And I got really excited because I had never spoken before in public, unless you count the high school table thing. I had no social media following at the time. My business that, that I grew was offline. So if you type my name into Google, I wasn't there. I was completely invisible. And so I said, sure, yeah, I'd love to come on the podcast. 
And next thing I know, I'm sitting in my pajamas, staring at a blank wall with a microphone, <laughs> uh, sharing my story. And an hour goes by, it felt like five minutes. And the guy said, yay, thank you so much for coming on my show. And I said, well, thank you for having me. And I have one question. How many people are listening to this thing? Now, to be honest, in my head, I'm thinking it's him, his mother, and <laughs> maybe some of his cousins. Like, you know, who, who's listening to this? And then he says, well, Daniel, there were over a thousand people listening. And I fell off my chair. <laughs> I said, what? Are you kidding me? I said, there's no way there were over a thousand people listening just now. He said, yeah. I said, where are all these people? He said, well, they're all over the world. And he starts listing all these countries. And I said, okay, this is nuts. I need to get into podcasting. This is huge, right? So two weeks later, I start my own podcast called Can I Pick Your Brain? I decide I'm going to pick the brains of the most successful entrepreneurs in our generation. Just two problems, Seth. One, I didn't know any successful entrepreneurs to interview. <laughs> Small problem. Uh, two, I didn't know how to get people to listen to the podcast, right? You know, I, I'm interviewing people, but how do I get people to listen? I've got no email list. I've got no social media following, like zil zero zilch. So that's when I had the first aha moment, which was, wait, that guy had a thousand people listening to me. I'm a nobody. And he had me on his show as a guest. So why don't I just go on other people's podcasts as a guest and leverage other people's audiences? In other words, I don't have to figure this out myself and build out my audience. I'll just leverage what people have already done. They've done the hard work. So I started getting on lots of different podcasts, whoever would accept me on a podcast, basically. And within a very short period of time, my podcast scaled to over 300,000 downloads. I ended up interviewing uh, four billionaires, the smartest man alive, the US memory champion, the leading hostage negotiator for the FBI, a lot of names that you've probably heard of like Robert Kiyosaki, Russell Bronson, you know, Noah Kagan, all these guys. And that was like less than two years. And then I wrote a book which became an international bestseller. And this all happened just by guesting on podcasts, nothing else. I didn't do anything else. So that's the first part of the story. The second part of the story is I started getting bombarded with emails. I'm talking dozens of emails a day from PR agencies and book publicists trying to get their clients on my podcast as guests. And there were two problems. One is they didn't know who I was. I didn't know who they were. This was cold. I didn't have a relationship with them. They were really lazy. They didn't you know, try to build a relationship. Two is their clients sounded dead boring. They all just sounded the same. Oh, I've got a great guest for you. He's a coach and he has a book. I'm like, no, you don't say really. Wow. That's unique. Right. And so I just kept sending these all to spam. Well, after a couple of months of me getting dozens of these a day and sending them to spam, I woke up one morning, this is about three and a half years ago, and suddenly had this light bulb moment that went off in my head. I said, someone's got to do a better job. I mean, these are PR agencies that are charging a lot of money and they're doing a really bad job. So I thought, well, I've got a top rated podcast. I'm friends with all these other top rated hosts. I've got over 150 guests that I've interviewed, you know, high profile guests. And I've been a guest myself on over 60 podcasts. So I know what a great guest sounds like. And I know how to position a great guest. And I've got the connections. So why don't I start a podcast booking agency? And I was one of the first to start in the industry. And then we ended up getting, you know, lots of different clients on the top podcasts. And then about a year and a half ago, I had another idea, which was, you know, there's only a small amount of people that can afford to spend thousands of dollars on an agency to book them on the top shows, right? And on the flip side, I'm only working with the top 250 podcasts and there's over 1.5 million. So that means that there are, you know, over a million podcasts out there that are looking for guests, but where are they getting their guests from? They're not getting them from agencies because they're too small. And so I realized that these two big markets that essentially are not being served, and that was the idea for podbooker.com, where we'd have a marketplace for both the guests and the hosts, and that way you cut out the agency, essentially. All right. So there's a whole lot to unpack in that yeah. answer, which I'm assuming is in, you know what, tell us about the, the international bestselling book. What's the title of it? What's it about? I'm kind of embarrassed by it because, and the reason I don't promote it nowadays anymore, I, I wrote it three years ago and a lot happens in three years, especially if, you know, you're, we're evolving, right? If you're an entrepreneur or if you're, you know, someone who's working on themselves, you know, constantly growing, I wrote that book and I'll be totally honest and transparent. I wrote it out of ego. A lot of it came from ego. So the book, I kind of, if I look at it, you know, I kind of feel like, oh man, you know, it's just. It's just egotistical. So obviously I want to write another book, 
um, which probably in three years I'll think is also egotistical. But the book's called The Self-Help Addict. It did help a lot of people, and it does have a very powerful message about self-help addiction. But, you know, I feel like at the time I was following some online marketers, and I noticed that their books were, were very geared towards sort of selling what they're offering. And, and so the book kind of, on the one hand, is, is got that great message, and I think it's, it's good. But at the same time, it's kind of just, I ruined it by, you know, kind of making it quite salesy. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it helps people anyway, and I'm sure the next one will be even better. So talk about you started a podcast booking agency and grew that and are now building a software platform, a matchmaking platform in essence, that literally is the antithesis and is the enemy of podcast booking agencies. Because if everybody used your software, no one would need a booking agency. So you're putting yourself out of business in a certain way. So how does Podbooker work? What does it cost? Where can our folks go to sign up? Tell us more. Before we go there, I love your question. It's a great question. And, and people ask me that. And the answer is, is it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't put my agency out of business, it will put a lot of agencies out of business, but it won't put mine. And the reason why is because my agency was always about the top, the top 250 podcasts. Um, those podcast hosts are you know, almost impossible to get you know, on those shows. They're totally booked out. They're very, very picky with who they have on their podcasts. They are not going to be on Podbooker. They're not going to be going on any platform for that matter. They get inundated with pitches. They're not interested. The only reason that I'm able to, to get my clients on those shows is because I've spent years building relationship with them, building a lot of trust. You know, I don't just put people on the podcast. I train them before I get them on. So there's a lot of training that goes in, um, the positioning. And because I've got a track record where when I send a guest on the podcast, you know, the, the host knows from experience that this guest is going to hit a home run. And so that's why I'm able to do that. Many, many, many of these booking agencies today are just basically just spamming hosts. They're just taking lists from iTunes, scraping lists, email lists, and just sending, you know, crappy emails. They're going to be put out of business because Podbooker is a space where hosts are going to be actively looking for guests. And also because it just doesn't, you don't get lost in the email, right? And when you're on Podbooker, so you set up a guest profile so that the host, it's very easy for the host to go look at your profile. They can see everything about you. They can actually listen to previous podcasts you've been on just with a click of a button. And what's really cool, we just launched a new feature where guests can get reviews from hosts. So uh, hopefully after this interview, I'll ask Seth for a, a nice review. Um, and then what happens is, of course, is that you showcase those reviews on your profile. And anytime a host looks at your profile, they'll see all of those reviews, which currently there is absolutely nowhere that you can get reviews from hosts and, and showcase them in one place. So because of that, the sort of the acceptance rate is going to be much higher. The acceptance rate rate right now is, is through the roof. We've already done in the past two months since we launched over 500 uh, accepted bookings through the platform. And there's a 24% acceptance rate, which is just nuts. That is absolutely incredible. Congratulations on creating that and solving a unmet need in the marketplace. What do you see with, I mean, we just recently saw, as we're recording this, the Joe Rogan, Spotify, you know, deal. There's a whole lot of money floating around the podcast ac acquisition space of networks and hosting platforms. Yeah. What do you kind of see as what, you know, predict the future next year or two? Okay, a couple of things. One, uh, so the podcasting space is going to change in a number of ways. First of all, right now, it is undervalued attention. Simple as that. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this a lot, undervalued attention. You go where there's where where the attention is undervalued. So for example, when Gary V started out on YouTube, nobody was was posting videos on YouTube. In fact, there weren't that many people watching YouTube videos. And but he found it's sort of a an opportunity where he saw, okay, this is gonna be huge. I'm gonna, you know, focus on building my my you know, following on here. And of course, look at him now, right? And I feel like the podcast space is the same. People say to me, Daniel, I think I'm late to the party. You're not late at all. Let's look at the contrast for a second. 1.5 million podcasts, of which there's about something like maybe half a million that are active. Okay. Let's even say that there's 
a million active, right? Do you know how many blogs there are? Close to a billion. Close wow. to a billion. We're almost, we're almost at a billion blogs. How many uh, YouTube uh, channels? A hundred million. So one million is a drop in the ocean when you compare it to the number of blogs and the number of YouTube um, channels that there are out there. So number one, the space is going to blow up, right? Podcasting is going to go from um, you know, roughly around a million active podcasts to tens of millions. So you are early to the game. And number two is because you're early, you know, when SEO first was a, a thing, I spent probably somewhere around $200 to $300 a month to hire a few guys in India. And I was number one on Google for some you know, really hard keywords to rank for. It was a joke. I mean, my, my phone was ringing off the hook. Everyone remembers those days, right? Today, it's, you know, unless you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars, sometimes right. ten, tens of thousands of dollars a month, it's depending on the keywords, you're not getting up there. Pay-per-click, right? AdWords. It used to be that I was spending around 10 cents a click for like the major keywords. Forget about it. Today, 20 bucks, 40 bucks per click, right? And the same thing with Facebook ads, same thing with everything. So once the market gets saturated, it becomes very expensive. Well, right now, guess how much it costs to get on podcasts? Well, nothing if you use podcasts. Zero. Zero. Exactly. If you're not using an agency, there is no cost to getting on a podcast. In fact, the one that I'm on right now that you're listening to didn't cost me a penny, right? And I'm in front of Seth, Seth, your whole audience. How long have you been running this show for? Uh, over 500 episodes, over, over yeah. almost two, two years or more. Yeah. So imagine 500 episodes. I can't even imagine how many hours that you've put into producing this, editing this, promoting this, preparing for this. And here I am, I should almost feel bad about this, coming onto your show, getting access to your entire audience, and I haven't paid you anything for that, right? And this is not, this is way more powerful than advertising because when you advertise on social media, you are interrupting people. They don't want to see your ad. You're, they are sitting there on the toilet till their thighs go numb, scrolling through their Instagram feed, and they're not interested in your ad that pops up and they might, you might get 1.2 seconds of their attention. And so that's the huge, that's the major difference between being a guest on a podcast and advertising, because when you're a guest on a podcast, you're able to connect on a human level, on a personal level, right? And people are tuning in. They're inviting you, right? I was invited onto the show. It's very different to when you're interrupting people. The other thing as well is that over 85% of people who listen to podcasts, listen to the whole episode from beginning to end. And the average podcast episode is 45 minutes long. That is a freaking gold mine because today the average attention span is around eight seconds, which is one second less than a goldfish. It, it's nuts. <laughs> if yeah, you can get is, someone's attention for 45 minutes, yeah, that's Yes, that's and, you've it, done a, right? and you've done a great job doing that here along with creating Geffen Media and Podbooker for we know your time's incredibly valuable. We greatly appreciate it. For our folks who are watching and listening and want to learn more, where are the best places for us to send them? Uh, I mean, right now it's free to join podbooker.com. So you could set up a guest profile on there. You could set up a podcast profile if you've got your own podcast um, and just start getting booked on podcasts and getting guests booked on your show. All right. This has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Daniel Geffen from Podbooker and Geffen Media. Daniel, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening and we'll see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.